if you used a common denominator approach, eventually you would have hit x4. Now remember that usually means we've gone too far and so we need to rather use the k method. So if we look carefully, this part and this part is the same. So all that we say now is let x squared minus 4x, let's rather call that k. So now what we do is we go replace all of these things with k, so it'll be k equals to 17 minus 60 over k. Now we get a common denominator because these are technically over 1. The common denominator is going to be k, so it's going to be k squared over k equals to 17k over k minus 60 over k. Now the k's cancel because they're all the same. And so we end up with k squared equals to 17k minus 60. We're then going to take it all to the left. Now this does actually factorize, but you could use the quadratic formula. It would be k minus 12 and k minus 5. I'll be honest, I didn't see that at first. I just used the formula. So k is 12 or k is equal to 5. So now what we do is we realize that that's not the answer. We need to now come back to this. And so what we can now say is if uh, k equals 12, then we can go work out x. So we can say x squared minus 4x equals to 12. And so x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals to 0. And this one does factorize pretty nicely as x minus 6 and x plus 2. And so x is going to be equal to negative 2 or x is going to be equal to 6. Then we can do the other one. So we can say if k equals to 5, then we can say x squared minus 4x equals to 5. Bring the 5 over. And this one will factorize like that. And so therefore we can say that x is 5 or x equals to negative 1.